In this module, we'll add the essential pieces to make a playable game. We'll create the HUD, which is going to be a crosshair, so the player can see where the next block will be placed. We'll also add a player character and a game mode, which are essential pieces to create a playable game. Our objectives for this module are to create the HUD to display the crosshair. We'll assign inputs to control player movement. We'll create a player character and write blueprint code that responds to the inputs. Finally, we'll tell the game to use our new player character by creating a game mode. To get started, go to the UI folder, right-click in the content browser, and select Blueprint Class. We'll need to search for the parent class, so toggle the All Classes list open, and then type in HUD. Select HUD for the parent class. Change the name of the blueprint to HBP underscore crosshair, and then open the new blueprint. Go to the event graph, click and drag and highlight the three existing events, and press your delete key. We won't need those. Right click and type in draw HUD, and choose event receive draw HUD. The event receive draw HUD receives the size X, the width of the screen, and the size Y, the height of the screen. We'll use these to calculate where to draw the crosshair. Let's add the code that's going to draw the crosshair, and then we'll do the math to figure out where to draw the crosshair. Right click and type in draw texture, and choose the draw texture node. For the asset, click the drop down and select crosshair. Let's click the browse button to go to the content browser location where the crosshair is to look at the graphics that's there for just a second. Hover over the crosshair. Notice that the dimensions of the crosshair are 36 pixels by 36 pixels. We'll need this information to figure out where to draw the crosshair exactly. Let's go back to the HBP crosshair. Observe that the screen X and screen Y values for the draw texture node are floats. The size X and the size Y are integers. We'll need to provide floats to provide the location of where we're going to draw that crosshair. So we'll need to somehow convert the ints to floats. Let's do the X axis first. We'll take the size X parameter and we need to divide that by two. Notice that when we press divide, we only have an option to divide an int by int, and the result of that would be an integer. We need to come up with a floating point value. We could convert it, but we can also make use of the fact that instead of dividing by two, we can multiply an int by a float and use 0.5 for the other operand. That's the same as dividing by two. That gives us a floating point value. Let's promote that to a variable by right-clicking on the product of that. Select Promote to Variable and type in Crosshair X. And we'll set that. Now we had previously observed that the texture for the crosshair was 36 pixels by 36 pixels. Let's set that in the Draw Texture node. So we'll set the screen width to 36 screen height to 36. The texture U is the texture space U coordinate of the upper left corner of the quad. We'll leave that at zero. Same with texture V. Now texture U width is the texture space width of the quad in a normalized UV distance, meaning that one would be the same as the width of the texture. It's normalized. So the height would be one as well. Now we have to account for the fact that this texture is drawn, taking into account the upper left corner of the texture being its point of origin. So if we drew that at exactly halfway across the screen, it would still be offset by half the width of the texture. So we need to subtract 18, half of the width, from the halfway point across the screen. Let's drag off of the crosshair X value, type in minus, float minus float, and 18. The remainder of that, 
becomes our screen X value exactly in the center of the screen. We'll hook up the set crosshair X in just a second. We need to account for the Y value as well. Now, for the Y value, we're not going to plot it halfway down the screen. We want it only a quarter of the way down the screen. But we're going to change that when we change from first person view to third person view and third person view to first person view. So that needs to be a variable. Let's add a variable by clicking the add variable button. And let's name this the crosshair y location. And we'll need to change that to a floating point value. Click compile. And let's provide a default value of that for of 0.25 or one quarter of the way down the screen. Then let's drag out the size y, multiply, and we'll use int times float and get the crosshair y location as the desired location of where we want the crosshair to go. We want it to go a quarter of the way down the screen by default. Let's promote that to a variable. Right click on the product of that, promote to variable, and we'll call that crosshair y. And we're going to connect the crosshair x set value into that. And finally, we'll hook that up to the draw texture, but we have to subtract 18 from that value because half the height would be 18. We're just going to duplicate this one by selecting it, hitting Control W, hooking that up. So crosshair y minus 18 becomes our screen y value. Let's try to neaten that up just a little bit. And there we go. That's the code to draw the HUD. Compile and save, and then close out of the HBP crosshair. Let's go back to the Blueprints folder. Notice that we left the BP base block and the BP floor in the Blueprints folder, and we did create a separate folder for blocks. So let's move those. Click on the BP base block, drag it over the blocks folder, release, and select move here. Do the same for the floor. Right click in the content browser, select blueprint class. We can close the all classes list and find character for the parent class. Name the new blueprint BP underscore block player and then open it. Make sure class defaults is selected. Let's open that up a little bit so we can read this better. And in the use controller rotation yaw setting, I'm going to move that split over a little bit. Use controller rotation yaw, we want to uncheck that. Select the mesh. And then in the skeletal mesh drop down, choose the SK underscore block character. We're going to need to reposition this somewhat. So let's set the location. In the X axis will be zero, the Y axis will be zero, and the Z axis will be negative 87. Then we'll change the rotation of it to zero, zero, and 270. For the animation mode, make sure use animation blueprint is selected. And then from the anim class drop down, search for block character anim BP. And there we go. We've got a nicely animated character ready to go. We'll need to add a spring arm component. So select the capsule component so that the spring arm will be parented to the capsule component. Click on add component and type in spring arm. And for the location of the spring arm, set it to zero, zero, and 50 in the Z. And the spring arm is what we're going to hook the camera to so that it follows the character around. The target arm length should be 300. And then find the use pawn control location, sorry, use pawn control rotation, and make that true. With the spring arm selected, add a component and type in camera. And this camera will be parented to the spring arm. We're going to make quite a few adjustments to the character movement component. To do this, select the character movement component in the component list. 
and we're going to search in the details panel for these settings. Type in gravity, and we're going to change that to 1.9, and this will make the character a little more responsive, um, and it'll feel a little more realistic when we're running around. So we'll set that to 1.9, and for the walkable floor angle, we're going to set that to 46, and that's so we can go up the stairs static mesh that's provided with the learning kit. We're going to change the maximum walk speed to 800, and then find the jump Z velocity, and we're going to change that to 800 as well. Search for the braking deceleration flying, and set that to 500. And again, this is going to help the character when it moves around, it'll just look a little more realistic and feel more realistic as you play the game. For the rotation rate, change the Z value of that to 540. Look for orient rotation to movement, and we want that to be true. And finally, can fly so that our character will be able to fly. And we want that to be true as well. Once you've made all those changes, you can clear out the search, press compile and save. And the next thing we're going to do is set up the inputs for this character. Go to the edit menu and select project settings. From the list on the left, find the input section. Now you'll see that there are a number of action mappings and access mappings already set up for us. We just need to add a couple of action mappings and one axis mapping. So let's start with the action mappings. Click the plus sign next to action mappings and name this place block. And this will be the place block action when we want to put a block down. We'll change that to the left mouse button. And we're going to add one more action mapping. And that will be the remove block. And we'll use the right mouse button for that. For the axis mappings, we need to add the axis mapping for moving up when we fly and conversely moving down. So for axis mappings, click the plus sign and type in move up for the name. And we're going to need two of them, one for going up and one for coming down. So click the plus sign next to that. And for the first one, we'll type in space bar. This will be how we'll move up, so it will have a scale of 1. And to go down, we'll use the left shift. And that will have a value of negative 1, or the opposite of up. That's it. Go ahead and close out of the project settings. Back in the BP Players event graph, let's add the events for the movements that we're going to program. So we'll search for jump. And we want the action events, and we want the jump action event. Right click again and search for move forward. And again, we want the axis event for that one. Right click and search for move right. And we want the axis event. Right click, turn right, and the axis event for turn right, and finally for the look up, and the axis event look up. So the easiest one is jump. Let's take care of that one first. Just drag off pressed and type in jump and choose character jump. And when released, stop jump. Stop jumping. That one's done. So let's drag around all of that and place a comment and call that jump. The next ones we'll do are turn right and look up. These are fairly easy as well. So for turn right, we're going to add controller yaw input. We're turning and we're turning around the Z axis. And we'll use the axis value for that. And for the look up, we're going to add controller pitch input. 
And again, we'll use the axis value for that. And those axis values are one or negative one. And they will go in the appropriate direction. So let's highlight those, select those, hit C, and we'll call that mouse input, or we'll leave a comment, mouse input, look up and turn. And we'll move those out of the way. And the last ones we have to add are the move forward and the move right. So for those, what we're going to do is we're going to get the control rotation from the pawn and that returns a rotator. We only want to rotate around the z-axis though. So we're going to right click on that return value and split the structure pin and not use the x and y rotation. We'll only use the z or the yaw. And we'll drag, we'll actually right click and we'll type make rotator and we'll leave the x and y zeroed out and just take the z or yaw of that rotation and that'll zero those out. From this new rotator, we'll drag off of that and we'll get its forward vector, which is the direction that rotator's facing. And then we'll drag off of it again and we'll get its right vector. That's the direction to the right. And from those, we can just add movement input. So we'll right click and select add movement input. And we'll duplicate that since we're going to use it in both places and look up the move forward. So the direction will be in the forward vector. And the scale value will be the scale value of the move forward input axis. This will be facing to the right of the character. So if the character is moving right, we'll look that up to add movement input. We'll use the right vector for that, for the direction. And then again, the scale input. And that's it. Our character can now move, but we haven't told the game to use our character yet. Let's compile and save and then go back to the editor and we have to add in our game mode next. Creating the game modes, pretty straightforward in the blueprints folder. We'll right click, we'll select blueprint class. And for the parent class, we use game mode base. And we'll call this GM underscore block game or game mode block game and open that up. We're just going to make some settings changes over here in the class defaults. For the HUD class, click the drop down and select our HBP crosshair. And for the default pawn class, click that drop down and find our BP block player as well. Compile and save. And we're done with the game mode. Close that out. Back in the editor, we'll need to edit the world settings. If you don't see the world settings here, go to the window menu. And in the window menu, about halfway down, you'll see world settings. And if that's unchecked, just click on it and you can then edit your world settings. In the world settings, we're going to override the game mode to use our new game mode that we just created. So click that drop down and find the GM game mode block game and select that. We can now test this by clicking the play button and you should see the character appear. Now, one thing I noticed when I pressed play was that the camera wasn't positioned correctly. To fix that, go back to the BP block player and select the camera. And you'll notice that the location for the z-axis is set to negative 50. I believe that's because the camera was added as a child to the spring arm, which is what we want. So let's zero that out. Let's click the little reset to default to set the location of the camera to zero, zero, zero. And we can go back and try it again. And you'll, I think you'll see that the camera is positioned correctly. And now you can use the crosshair to click on blocks and add blocks if we had the ability to add blocks, which we don't have just yet, but we'll have it in a moment. The last bit of setup for the BP block player is to capture the crosshair HUD in a variable so that we can use it later. We're also going to need the player controller later and we'll make a variable for that. So go back to the BP block player and in the event graph, right click and type in 
begin play. We're going to get the event begin play node back um, because that's where we can capture our variables when the object is first created. So type in get player controller and we're going to store that in a variable. So we'll right click the return value of that, promote it to a variable called player controller. And from the player controller, we can get the HUD, which returns a generic HUD object, and we'll cast that to the HBP crosshair that we previously created. As we know, that's what type of class it is. I'm going to move these over a little bit. And right click on the return value of that, promote to variable, and we'll name that crosshair. So that's the setup. Let's highlight all of that, put a comment on it. Begin play. It'd be good if we could see that. There we go. Click compile and save. And finally, let's test out our character. Come back to the block game map, click play. And you see we have a character that we can move the view around with the mouse, moving the mouse left and right, up and down. We can look up, we can look down. And finally, with the W, A, S, and D keys, we can run around our map. And very shortly, we'll be able to place blocks down. In this module, we created the HUD that displays a crosshair. We added some player inputs and created a player character Finally, we wrote the blueprint code to respond to the inputs. We also told the game to use our new player character by creating a game mode.